Hello, it's Sarah. And I'm ready. Well, I've already been working on some things. I'm going to make some mosaic tiles to create a mosaic um, polymer clay mosaic. So I've already, let me show you what, I have black polymer clay, but I've already been creating a little bit. So let's show you. They're not baked. I have a couple of dream catchers, some feathers, and a little elephant. I also embedded some silver tone, like they're, they're not real silver, metal pieces into the clay, some Hansa hands, lotus flower, and a peace, song, a peace word. Um, so I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, this is all inspired by a piece that I did a long time ago, one of the first ones I ever did, and I used mostly black clay. So this is a Primo clay by Sculpey. I don't know if I'm going to zoom back up a little bit. So I have a pasta machine, and I condition my clay with a pasta machine because you can just take this and ball it up and use your hands, and this is called conditioning the clay. You want to get it pliable you know malleable soft whatever you want to say um, and, and it's good exercise I don't know if you have arthritis you know it can hurt um, if you're impatient it's a little slower <laughs> so I will take my clay and just cut it into these little wedges they're about a quarter inch then I take my pasta machine which is just basically it's two rollers it's all it's hooked to my desk so I can't move it two rollers that roll next to each other and you roll the clay in between it so um, that's how I like to I just keep so I just took that and I put it through and then you fold it in half and you do it again and you just keep doing that and what happens is it moves the molecules in in the polymer clay all around and it it softens it and makes it more pliable. So that's how I condition my clay. Um, so you want to do that. You want to get it nice. And um, I have these. I bought these big bricks to work on because these are about. I want to say they run about eight, nine, ten dollars. Um, and if you use a forty percent off coupon, you know you're getting a nice discount. Um, but it also. I mean, I've only made um, ten tiles so far. <clears throat> um, but you'll get a, you probably need a couple of those big um, pieces to get enough tiles to make a mosaic. So, um, anyhow, you're going to, it takes a minute and you'll see it's pretty labor intensive. And so each, each tile is basically a little work of art on its own. So I'm just going to set these aside for a second. I've, I've got this, and I think my pasta machine says 8. There's really no line on the gauge, but it's around an 8. And um, let's do some mandala shapes. So I have these little um, stamps, and I use stamps that you would use for paper crafting for the most part. Um, cheap, expensive. These some are given to me. Sherry sent me these. So let's see how that works. I think she said it gets stuck. So I'm just going to spray the clay with a little bit of water to see if I need a release and give some pressure, some even pressure. Nice. It, it worked just fine. So I'm just going to go <clears throat> around this whole, see how many I can fit. But I like to keep them in line so when I cut it, it will, here's another one. Oh, I already did. I really like this one. Um, I like this flower one. So I just pulled a few of these. I mentioned in the previous video, I have stamps from everywhere, guys. So use what you have. The theme of this particular piece that I'm going to be making is kind of a flower child, peace, love, zen, uh, feel to it. So um, I have a lot of different stamps that kind of are in that theme. And a mandala simply means round. Ooh, I like that one. So I'm giving good pressure. And you can't really see these right now, but I'm going to cut them. And then I'm going to use mica powders to jazz them up some too. So I like to cut 
my tiles really close to the pattern. I don't like to leave too much clay, just um, you have to release it from this surface. And this is just a glass mat. It's a probably a cutting board. I think I got it at Christmas tree shops. Um, but hopefully it isn't too busy, but no, I think it's okay since I'm working with black clay. So I've done, let's see, so now I'm going to cut and I just use, I eyeball everything. I'm big, big eyeballer. Um, try to keep them as square as I can. So when you're creating your mosaic, everything will fit together much easier. But that's done. I'm going to add perfect pearls in a minute. Um, this one is super cute. I just really like the swirls on the edges of that. So the clay that I'm, this clay here, I just put back into the pile, put it back in the pasta machine and um, roll it out again and make more tiles with it. So I'm just evening this up because it didn't come out square. So when I did the yesterday video, it was back to basics, right? Um, meaning, when I first started doing this, I didn't have a lot of supplies, so I was going to try and represent or recreate that, even though I have a million supplies now. I have so much stuff. Um, the feel that I got from having not as much experience and not as many supplies by just using one color of clay or you know I may introduce other colors of clay but right now I'm thinking I wanted to go back to basics so one color of clay my mica powders and just some beads because I've always done oh well I haven't always done it but one of the first crafts I started doing when I started crafting was beading I belonged to a kit club for a little while. I made just random stuff. Then I started making sun catchers for cars. Like, I've just tried everything. I love shiny things. So, um, I had the beads, and then because you bake polymer clay, and beads are generally glass, I mean, there are some plastics, so be careful what you use. When you bake them, they can melt or distort. Um, so you want to use metal, glass, things that won't um, when you bake them. So mostly these charms and stuff like that, they're fine if you want to embed them in clay. Um, but that's what I meant by back to basics. Pretty much, I used to just embed whatever. I had little, um, what are these? These are actually like not grommets, but uh, I can't think of the name of it. Beads, Swarovski crystals, and then this. This is mica powder. So for this mosaic, what I've done, and look at this feather, red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and then I put purple around the edge, but you can't really tell, and I just scratched it a little. Um, this isn't baked yet, and then I just embedded gold little beads in that. This, this one has like a little bit more of a purple bead inside. Um, let's see, I did white. And then a light blue around the edges and some red, which I'm using Inca Gold for my red because I don't have a red powder. You can use eyeshadow. Um, I got this pack at the dollar store. Red isn't a big eyeshadow color though, but it isn't easy to find in a lot of things. I think to make red, you need um, something that isn't easily, that doesn't come by easily anyway. So for my little elephant, I used gray for him, and then I used red, yellow, orange. on. I put a little green on his head. So I'm using the colors of the chakra, which is a book I got. Well, it's more than just a book, but there are seven chakras throughout our body. It has to do with the endocrine system. Anywho, it's just my vibe at the moment. Do what you want. Use your favorite colors and just have fun and use what you have too. Now I've got Pearl X and Perfect Pearls and I have those colors out here that I just named but I also have gold, silver, bronze um, so see here's the colors and I can embed, if I'm going to embed anything I want to do that before I add my mica powders 
So I think I want to do that. Let me see. I have all these gemstones in here. These are a lot of clearance. I know I got these bigger ones at um, Hobby Lobby. These come in sets like this. And they're different millimeters. But like I could even just use, this has like, it's a white AB. There's blue, green, purple. So I have pretty much... A lot of different stuff because I get it when I see it on clearance um, I really really like this blue I think I want to put this blue but I have gold I just want to put this blue I don't know why it was calling me I'm gonna put it in the middle of these flowers I don't know if it'll show up I don't think I'm gonna put it because it does not seem like it's gonna show up but then like I have the all these are literal Swarovski crystals that came off of a crystal um, little ornament that I had that broke. So I picked off all the crystals. There's leaf shapes in there. So like I said, anything that isn't going to melt in the um, and I use a toaster oven to bake my clay. I have these little. I want to say this is actually a spacer bead and it's like a little flower. So let me. I'm going to embed this too. Actually, this could go here. And this could go here. Maybe I'll put this here. See, I actually am I'm shocked when I sell my mosaics for all the work for one little tile, one little insignificant pretty much tile right I'm just all the work that goes into it so I'm just going to take a pencil and push down with the um, just going to press that into the clay and a lot of times when you are embedding things into the clay it will distort the shape so you might have to trim it but I can bake that now and it'll be fine and I am going to embed this little flower shape even though it's not exact maybe in this one I kind of like it in this one. I'm going to press down. It it should stay once it's baked. The clay will grab onto it. But sometimes I, I pluck them out and I glue them back in. Um, I think I'm going to put a little gold bead in each of the centers of the flowers on that one. I have these tiny little, I guess you would consider these seed beads. Um, and I use a toothpick. So let me zoom in. I just put a few out in this lid. And I just pick them up with this toothpick and just push them down in there. For the most part, you're not going to see the exact side you want to see and you may indent the clay a little because of the way the toothpick goes into the clay it's a little off kilter um, but you still get the result that you want so I'm just kind of pouring some more out into a lid no duh Sarah no duh um, what else so yeah I like these q-tips these are from Target I think they're by Diamond but I don't know if toothpicks have like different thickness tips and stuff. Oh, see, that was a, like a tighter bead too. Meaning like the, the hole for some reason felt tighter on there. I think the thicker beads, they're different widths. They tend to go into the clay nicer, like straighter. Um, I think these are glass seed beads. But I have had most of these supplies in my stash for a long time. And they're just in little containers that I don't, I have, they're not marked. So I assume, and you shouldn't always assume. So I think I'm ready for mica powders with that now. So let's see. I think I want to do, I'm going to do some like lavender, um, and I have tons of colors of mica powders. I've gotten them, I have gotten them locally and um, they have sold them 
at my Michaels before, but I don't think Michaels had the Pearl X this time when I went and looked. So you only need a little, and I like to just rub it on the surface. Like, don't press too hard so you don't get it in the nooks and crannies because you want the black impression to be what you see. But look how gorge. Oh, man, that's too gorge, right? So, I mean, you could just simply put... Like, I'll put purple, and I'm going to touch this really softly. Oop, I'm not even in the shot. But I'm really just going to, because there's, I didn't put as deep as an impression in this one. But you can, it's just picking up some of that design. I'm going to wipe my finger, and I'm going to go around with, let's do, I love this blue color, but I've been using it a lot. I'm going to go with the darker. Nope. I can't make decisions. How about green? <laughs> So you, oh, you really don't need a lot. Like what just fell out, I'm just going to get on my finger. And once you've applied it, it won't, the next color won't stick. So if I go back to the purple, I can put it only, and it's only going to stick where it didn't stick the first time or where nothing else has been. So see, I'm touching the green, but it's not really going on the green. And that's done. Like, I will bake that, and it'll be, that's it. That's a, that's a tile. So this one, actually, let me put a little green on the edges of this one. Just because I like that combo. And it's just going to pop on those corners, because that's where I haven't, see, it's where the black clay is showing. So once you've put this on the clay, that's where it's going to stay. So I can kind of touch it everywhere. And the green's only going to adhere where I haven't put anything yet. All right, so those two are good to go. Like, I didn't embed anything into this, which I think I still could, but here's the thing. Let's see. I'll try it. I have a couple um, places where I have a bunch of colors of these. Here's the red ones. These are kind of like red and yellow mix. These are, that's, this is a more red I'm going to, I'll take these out, and we'll see what this looks like. I, put, I just put my fingernail on that. I knew it. All right, so I'm going to just try and stick this here. See? And it's not sticking as well because um, there's mica powder there. And mica powder is slipper. It's like a slick metallic powder. So you should always embed anything before you add that, which I'm just teaching you a lesson right now, let's just say. Um, and I mean, they should stay, like I said, once the clay bakes, it kind of grips onto the bead too. So if you push it in there nice, it, it shouldn't come out. These, I've not really had a lot of trouble when I've embedded seed beads. Um, they tend to stay put. I'm just looking for thicker ones. They they seem to be, but look how pretty and it just adds. I mean, it's definitely a lot, a little more work. And I could definitely put something in the middle. I'm gonna put this gold one in the middle. It's actually like an orange, and eh, it didn't really show up. But that's cool, right? Can you even see it? I wasn't in the shot. I'm sorry. So those are ready to bake, and I'm loving. Wait until you see. When, when they're all baked, what it's going to look like. It, it's just, when you put them all together, I mean, it's so gorge. But each one is a little work of art, I think. And so when you put a whole mosaic together of this, it's a real lot of work. You know, and I, I mean... I don't think I give myself enough credit. I want to use this light blue. Now, should I? I'm, I'm going to embed something in the center of that. And I have these little tiny Swarovski crystals. Um, I also use this as bead chain. So this little black piece here, it's like a bead chain, but I cut them off and embed them in the clay. Oh, here's my little ones. And I get these all over the place, wherever. I think I'm going to put one of these. This is like a, just a clear with AB. 
and that means Aurora Borealis. Hopefully it'll fit right in the middle. Push it down. And I think that might be it. Like the way there's like these little points on here, I could put something, I could just put a bead in each corner. But I think I'm just going to leave it at that. So let's try some other colors. How about orange? Does that look orange or just gold? It looks orange. I'm just going to go all orange on this one. But you, the idea is you really just want to skim the surface so that it picks up that I don't put powder like right here. Powder touched the impression inside. So if you press too hard, you're going to lose that nice bright black impression but I can see that just fine. And then I'm just going to put some of the light blue on the outside edge, which is not this one, this one. It's called sky blue. And you really only need the, just the cap. And I know I'm not, for all of you clayers out there, you know the deal. So that's how much I have on my finger. And I just touch it and kind of blend it in because it's only going to go where I haven't put anything and I mean I still see some it's it is sticking to some places but that's okay it's pretty I'm very happy but see how I just put my whole finger on top and it's just I have so much of that blue and then there's this one which let's see what this one's gonna be like I definitely think I need to put something in the center of this one because how about a big red? Oh wow, I forgot about one thing. Uh, we just moved my son James and his girlfriend left behind some um, I think it was stuff for nail art. So she had a bunch of seed beads, not seed beads, um, micro beads which would be cool. I haven't played with them in a polymer clay tile yet. So I'm embedding that red one. And I think that's it. I'm just going to do, I want to do red. So this is called Inca Gold. And it dries out and it gets moldy. So I'm just going to spray a little water in there to get it moist. And then I'm going to get a little bit of that on my finger. and go around this center. Whoop, there's something on there. Um, anywho, I'm gonna try and find it because I think I put it out here somewhere. Um, but it was a little disc filled with like shapes of metal shapes and stuff that you would put on your fingernails. I'll show you. So I'm gonna put this, there we go. Again, this is um, a metallic rub and it's just in wax form instead of the powdered form. I think I'm going to put yellow. I should just, I'm going to go all red. The whole thing. Maybe a little blue on the outside edge. So that's really coming to life. See how you can really see that design now. Um, I need a... Yeah, I'll show you when I come across it. It's definitely, it's around here somewhere because it's got a bunch of different shapes that I could probably have fit in there. Let me put... Um, I'll use this purple. I like it a lot, this purple. And because I'm using similar colors or just this palette, say, right, the mosaic will play together. Because I'm using all black clay, the, 
the only thing that's going to be able to tie everything together is the color so I'm going to go back up so far this is how it's looking of my tiles so they all have the same accent colors the same colors of mica powder so hopefully when I start putting it together it's gonna look cool like I am I'm pretty happy so this is really gonna be cool I'm using a lot of stamps that I haven't used before like those um, I shared this in the previous video but there there's um, the elephant and the um, dream catchers and the feathers are from these three stamp sets were which they're kind of boho inspired boho theme they were at Michael's maybe in the spring so I think I got them this year you know what I mean I go I find things all the time and I, I've stopped buying things as much because I just don't wanna I have a lot and I want to use what I have so let's do this stamp right now this is so I gotta move this stuff because I don't want to make a mess and I should cover the mica powders these can really be a mess if you spill them it's a really big mistake so probably better to close everything up before I make a big mistake um, I'm gonna do this one so I need to roll out that clay so I also have this kind of roller you get this stuff this is probably by Sculpey um, in the in the clay aisle at Michaels there's a ton of tools and this is a great one and before I had a pasta machine I would just roll out my clay by hand um, I took a class with Lori Micah when I first started doing mosaics and she just uses an actual rolling pin like you would use for a pie so I'm just getting this down to a size that I can fit in my pasta machine and it's picking up all that mica powder that I dropped on my um, mat here and that was just a bubble but I think that'll fit through I'm gonna just keep putting it through until it uh, is a size uh, that I can work with go back to my eight I think this is a little thin actually I'm gonna go back so I folded it in half and just I'm gonna run it through again yeah this is much better I, you don't want it to be too thin um, so I, I wanted to do this bird but I think I want to do this this is good I'm gonna be filler tiles so I'm just gonna take it and just actually I'm gonna press it down with this block it's much deeper over there let me see if I can put it back on better I'm gonna do follow your bliss mm, and I really want to do this birdie I wonder if I can fit him I think I can now for this particular piece I am using a big um, Oh, Link Johnson just told me it's called a cradle board so it's a pretty big surface but if you're using a small box you know you want your tiles to be smaller so you have to create tiles that are going to fit on the project that you um, are going to put it on you know your substrate right this is I just want to make that deeper um, I don't know if I can it's not easy to re as you would know if you're a stamper you can't re stamp a lot of times but we'll try I just want to get a deeper impression on this side 
Oh, good. Okay. So, this one is the one that I really want to um, play with. I'm going to just try and cut it away. I like to work on each piece kind of in a smaller uh, capacity. I don't know. I don't need to be talking as much. You guys know what, what I'm doing here. But you need to release it from the board. I'm kind of butting into this one. It's getting on my nerves. Let me just turn it. There we go. And you'd think I'd be an expert by now. Not so much. All right, now, the thing is, I am going to embed um, crystals in here, so I'm not going to cut it apart yet because it will distort, and I like to make everything pretty straight. So let's play first. Let's get some crystals. And on this one, on these, I'm going to put some of these little, so these right here, um, this is going to have bigger ones, but like, all right, let's go with red. This is going to be all red. So this takes time, and you do not need to do it. I could, if we were really getting back to basics, you could just put your mica powders on and be good to go, and you would have a really nice mosaic. Nothing's going to be wrong. Oops. Sometimes the bead um, gets stuck on my Q-tip and, you know, so I might have, have trouble with that. It might fall out, but even if one falls out, it's handmade and um, people just have to know. This is not from a factory. So what else do I want to do? So I think I want to do that to these two. But that's going to be gorge. So I'm going to do these two. I'm going to embed. I really want to find those um, metal pieces. Because I forget like what shapes they are. And they might fit perfectly in here. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to look for them. I'll be right back. All right, so here they are. So inside here, and I've gotten this type of thing from Tulip too for the, the Swarovski crystals where each one has a different color, but there's all different shapes. Like there's, I think these are hearts and these are little, you know, there's squares, circles, Littler squares, stars, OMG. But like there's leaves on this. If I put a leaf in every one of those, man, that would be a lot of work. Um, yeah, and the, they're a little big. But man, like, hmm. Um, not right now. Uh, I'm good. But yeah, I mean, this is all for nail art, I guess. So I'm going to just put um, a little Swarovski crystal in there. And that's why I like to get them when they're on clearance. And because they're not cheap. Um, I got a new pack, though. Where's my new pack? I bought this one on clearance. I like these colors. I think I want to open this. And usually it's in a case that you can like, I'm going to cut it and the case sometimes will hold them for you. This isn't telling me how to open it. But I'm just going to cut across the bottom. There we go. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. Usually it's in like a plastic case that will hold them. And up, oh, but it opened. 
Oh boy. Uh, so that's why I just put them in baggies. But let's see. I think I want to use these cool ones. I'm going to go... I just couldn't resist this color. This color was just so gorge. I, I couldn't resist. So I'm going to put those in there. And I don't even know if I'll do the other ones because they're kind of short. Maybe I'll just use these three sections. Ah, I'm going to put green on the leaves. So I'm going to cut these apart. So let me put this somewhere. I won't spill it. So all the way over there. And then when I cut this and it's always easier see this is what I'm forgetting to move it to a smaller tile like this could be my initial where I start but I need to be able to move I can move it around but working when I'm doing a lot of work on a tile I like to use another smaller tile so that I can move it all right, I haven't, I haven't embedded these yet, so I have to push these down. Let me make sure they're centered. I just give it a press. I like it so that the, the, just at the level of the clay, my pencil eraser just kind of taps the level of the clay. All right, and that is done. So I have to release it. Again, now I'm going to cut them apart. And my lighting is sort of tricky, so I'm just tipping it so I could see where I'm going. Now I want the I want my seed beads to have enough. Am I in the shot? They need to be able to hold on, so I'm going to go give them a little more room, cutting right at the edge of the other one. So I could probably go closer on this side. And again, then, all right, see, here's what I mean. I just want to turn this. Um, So I'm going to cut right at the edge of that. And that's, I'm just going to put mica powder on it and it'll be done. This one. And once these are baked, you can still cut them. If, the, if, it's, if you have a spot that that can fit on your mosaic, you can cut it and, it and get it to fit. It's a little wonky. This side came super close, but that's okay. I'm going to bake it like that. Got to put mica powders on it. Uh-oh. One of my CZs fell out. So like I said, after it's baked, I kind of give it a feel and make sure it's embedded and it's adhered. And if it's not, I'll just take a piece, little bit of glue. But usually when it bakes, it kind of grabs the, the bead better. So I'm not going to panic yet. So for this one, I definitely want to use this green. Where is it? Where did I put it? Here, here, here. This is called spring green. And I'm going to put that because there's leaves. So this is definitely leaves. Oh, 
and this one too. And I think I'll use, see I have such beautiful pinks and pink isn't part of the chakra colors. This is flamingo pink, but I have like a pink gold and oh man, I have so many. I'm going to use this flamingo pink. What is this one called? Pink gold, but they're not red like that, but that's okay. I'm going to put it on there. I'm a pink girl. I love pink. It kind of looks purple. But, um, I haven't put it on any of my other tiles, so hopefully it won't stick out like a sore thumb. kind of looks purple. I should have done red. Stuck to my palette. Cute, right? And then this one... So I'm just taking these off and put them on my tile. My tile's getting a little full, my baking tile. I have to move things over a little. Sorry about that. You can't see what I'm doing. And then this one, um, maybe I'm just going to do it gold. I have... A couple different golds. Aztec gold, solar gold, and this is just called perfect gold. I'm going to pick one of them. I think it's going to be the Aztec. And that's it. I'm just going to use that. All right, so I'm going to keep working. I'm going to do more of the same. Um, I have so many um, stamps here, so let me come back up. That I want to do, oh, I was going to, you know what, I'll do that birdie real quick, because he's over here somewhere. All right, yeah, let me put this. So I'm just putting all of these on this tile, and this is going to go in the oven. I have a lot more mandalas I want to make, these type, just the circle ones. Um, I just got to make room. That's kind of stuck. And um, so I'm going to load this up with tiles and stick it in the oven. And that's just the beginning. I have so many tiles to make. I still have a lot of things I want to embed in the clay, but let me do this little... Um, this one I'm just going to keep, I'm not going to embed anything in there. He's just going to be a little dove. And, like, you can use a brush if you really want to put a lot of mica powders on. But because I'm a heavy hand, I like to do, I like to try and use my finger because I will overdo it. And, like I said, if you put the, if the mica goes down in all the nooks and crannies, you're not going to be able to see the impression as well. So I like to start out slow. I'm going to go with green. Because this kind of looks like foliage to me, these areas. It looks like there's a flower in the middle. So I'm going to make this green. And then that, let's do that. I'll go with the pink since I have the pink out and it has to match something. Pink flower there. Um... 
Maybe I'll do the pink over here. And fill in with the gold. What was that? Aztec gold? Oh, that's bright yellow. Aztec gold. And then I'll put blue in the sky. And then I'll put some blue around the edges. I have a couple different blues out. This one is the true blue. And then I have this one, which is baby blue, I think. Sky blue. I'm going to go with the sky blue. haven't used the true blue too much, I don't think, yet. But... So it is Thursday, right? Yeah. And it's hot. I w it's an exercise day, but I'm going to go tonight when it, you know, after dark when it cools down. Um, I got up a little late today. And um, it's just nice to be indoors creating in the air conditioning. So hopefully you guys are able to keep cool. Um, but look, so I got a little bit of mica in there in some of it, but that is adorable. Adorable. I'm going to leave it on, let's see, um, and I could even trim it down a tiny, meansy, weensy bit more. And that was crooked. But I like to keep the tiles as trimmed down to the design as I can. And that way, well, you can fit more tiles for sure. But see how I got some blue in there? I don't like that. How adorable. And I have a, another one that goes with this. What does it say? It's just a heart in the same type of design. He is cute. Um, so I think I need to start another tile for baking. And these are thin. So this actually is really, really thin. Probably the other tiles I've made so far are on the thicker side. But let's do this bliss in the same way. So it says, follow your bliss. I'm going to go like this and make sure it's straight. And I just use the edges to go perpendicular and get it as straight as I can. And I'm just going to go, oh, I could put a definite gem in there. So let me do just a little maybe clear one or, um, yeah, I like this. This is kind of big though. That's too big. I'm going to grab one of those, these guys again. This will be perfect. And you can get the Swarovski crystals with a coupon, but I, I tend to get whatever's on sale or clearance, and I, I use them. I use, what I, I, I use what I have, you know. I mean, any bling is good bling in my book. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do all the chakra colors. So I'm going to kind of do it like I did the leaf. So I'm, this leaf, is it a leaf? It's a feather. I always get leaves and feathers mixed up. Red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, blue, green. So I'm going to start with red, and that's this Inca gold. And it probably dried up by now. Yep. I'm going to squirt it. So let's see. Should I go across? I'm going to go that way. 
Red. Ooh, that's wet. I didn't want it to be that wet. Red. All right. I have orange. Kind of like an ombre, right? But it's in rainbow. Orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. not going to be able to fit them all. Then I'll just go purple. I'll have to skip the indigo on this one. Where is my purple? Kind of cool. I definitely touched inside the letters, which I mean, you know, but I like it. Pretty happy with that. I got red on top of the gem. Like I can just see. And it will come off. Before I pop these in the oven, I'm going to see. That was on the um, gemstone. I'm going to just hit it with water because on the packaging of the Perfect Pearls, it says to just not even spray it with water, but just let the mist touch it. And for some reason, that sets it in. I've never really had an issue with it rubbing off, but they say it can rub off. So um, I'm going to just do that to double check. So that's cool. Very rainbowy. All right, so I'm going to do more of the same. I'll be back. And after some things are ba baked, I'm going to embed. So have we done it, any embedding? Um, no, I don't think I have. So actually, I could do a couple of, well, other than the gems. I've embedded the gems, right? Um, you know, Ginny lives here again, my son's dog. Um, so a lot's been going on, guys. Life is funny that way. Sometimes you have nothing going on, and sometimes you have a lot of stuff going on. I like when nothing's going on. <laughs> well, I don't know. I like both. So I just need to get this rolled out again. I went a little bit thicker because when you embed stuff, it um, you just need more clay to embed it in. So these, I don't even know. I think they were on earrings or something. I'm going to break off the little jump ring that is on there. I guess it's called, it, it's the bale. And I'm going to embed these in clay because I just think they're cool. So I'm going to embed that. And this. Oops. And I don't know, I mean, it could have been a whole string of them, and I've used them in other stuff. So I'm going to put those in. These were, they're metal stickers by Momenta. I've had these forever, and this is the perfect, 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 perfect thing, because they're basically little metal mandalas. So those are going to be perfection. And they have a little piece of sticky back um, glue-ish stuff, whatever. Now these may not embed into here. Um, and so after I bake them, I'll definitely make sure that they're stuck by, I'll, I'll pluck it off and I'll, because um, they're super thin. These are, these are maybe as thin as pencil, pencil thin, not pencil thin, paper thin, my gosh. 
anywho, um, I've never, you know, embedded something like that thin. But aren't they perfect for this project? So all of these are getting used. And if you don't, if you need something that you've already embedded in clay, you can pop it out. You can break the clay. Clay is plastic, and because I rolled this out so thin, it it'll you can break it off and embed it in a different color clay if you want. I'm gonna do. I love this peace sign. I don't know how it's gonna look on the black clay. Oh, it'll look fine because I'm gonna put mica powder around it. Ha ha. Um, I generally like to put these nice and even side by side, I mean, because that way when I'm cutting them apart, they, it doesn't give me a problem. I'm just breaking that off a little more. Um, let's see. If, this one has one of the bales, too because it was a pendant, but I'm going to just grab it and break it like that. And I mean, you could leave it on. There's nothing saying you have to break it off. I have this Bliss metal. And so I think... What else? I have these Asian... I have these big feathers, which I like. And these Asian coins, um, definitely like these. Don't know what they mean. And look, it's back and front. I don't know if I'll put it on this because it, I want everything to be able to be cut apart. So again, I'm just going to use my pencil and give some pressure and cut around them and bake them but I think I will end up popping these off and making sure they're glued in so I'm making an impression and I'll probably bake them in the clay but once they're baked I'll scratch them off or pluck them out and uh, I use glossy accents usually that's a pretty strong adhesive and it does well with this so far uh, with polymer clay. Polymer clay does react crazy with certain, oh, I got my fingernail in it, um, with certain mediums. So I'm no expert. You guys need to Google and make sure you're, you know, not making your life's work and it screws up because I told you something. So, you know, I am not an expert. So please watch other videos um, <laughs> this one needs a little more help <clears throat> all right so I'm not gonna do him right now move over mica powders I really hope I don't spill you oh I have this lotus leaf lotus flower I'm sorry going to just break off the and I will impress that keep putting my fingernail in it I really do need to release these first See, that's coming out already. I, I moved it. Hmm. These are all going to fall out. Well, maybe not.
Ugh, see? I get, I am hasty and yes, I will make a mess. Okay. So, this one is good. I think it's going to be good just like that. I'm just going to put some blue. Oh, it's getting on the gems, but when it's baked, you can wipe it all off with a wet towel or um, see now would be a good time to use a brush And I, like I said, I keep repeating myself, I will probably be gluing that in. But I will bake it just like that first. Or maybe I'll just bake it without the... No, I'm going to bake it just like that. Maybe the clay could have been a little thicker for that one. I don't know. So I'm going to just separate these. So this is coming off. I'll just take it off and glue it in when it comes out of the oven. And it left a nice impression so I'll know, you know, where it goes. But this tile will be glued in. And I'm not putting any mica powders on these. I'm just keeping them black. I think it would, it'll add, it's definitely, oh no, I did on that one. There's a couple that, that are just black on my um, frame that inspired this. So cute. But see how I really have to have it even? It drives me crazy if, there, that's better. So really just the mandala is showing. I mean, I don't leave a lot of clay around the edges at all. So that's it, guys. Basically, I'm going to do more of the same and just collect up as many tiles as I think I'm going to need. Um, it's going to be a lot. So you might not see me till the end, like maybe next week. Um, and I'll get back to you and um, put it all together. Or maybe I'll film me. I just I'm very repetitive though. I think I think I've been here done this a lot on my channel. Um, you guys are all experts by now. And so pretty. I'm so happy that I found these and I'm using them because I come across them all the time. Like those, I've just had them forever. And um, this project is perfect for them. So, you know, I actually looked through my buttons, which are um, dress it up buttons, I mean. They're little shapes and um, themes you can buy with those but this is cool like see that's just a you know I don't know it's just gonna be an accent piece but then these lotus flowers these uh, Peggy gave me and Peggy if you're watching I definitely haven't forgotten I want to send you a dot mandala but I'm kinda you know I don't know I'm thinking about something else and but I know that's not necessary. So anyway, um, Peggy sent me my beads. So there's the lotus flower. But she also sent me these charms, and now I'm using them in a mosaic. Um, so okay, I'm going to let you go. That's, oops, that's it for today. 
and I'll be back if I if I think of anything else and if I want to share um, any other techniques that I'm going to do but basically that's what this one's all about just embedding getting the um, impression of these cool things into black clay and then bringing that impression out with mica powders or um, rub and buff or Inca gold whatever metallic rub you have um, and then also embedding metal beads and Swarovski crystals and creating tiles for a mixed media mosaic so that's it guys thanks for watching